let's talk about farms. Do you have seed stock? You know, uh, fingerlings in the case of fish. Uh, we call PLs, post larva in the case of shrimp. You know, and they either go, in the case of fish, they either go into a, a cage or a pond. In shrimp, it's always a pond, you know, of various and assorted sizes and configurations. Uh, you have water, of course, which is uh, extremely important. Water quality is one of the key components of, uh, of aquaculture, of seafood farming, per se. And then uh, you have feed and oxygen. And that oxygen can be either natural, you know, just the wind blowing it back and forth, or it can be introduced via agitation or any number of those things. I gotta tell you, so when we first started down the path of, of responsible aquaculture, uh, the first thing that we needed to determine is what does responsible look like? What is responsible? And the way to define responsible is by standards. Now, the BAP standard is, is responsible in several different ways. It actually has four pillars. So you have an environmental responsibility pillar. You have a social responsibility pillar. Uh, you have an animal welfare responsibility pillar. And finally, of course, you have the food safety aspect of it. There has been a tremendous amount of advancement in the agriculture sector. There's been more advancement in the last six years than it has in the previous 20. And that is making, and that is why our standards need to constantly be updated and adapted because the industry is changing so fast or the methods are changing so fast. We now have automatic feeders with sonar and they can detect where the feed goes and then they wait to hear if the shrimp are eating it or not by the sound of the mandibles. And if they're not eating, they don't feed. And if they're eating, they feed. They take water temperature, they take turbidity, and they have, and they have Wi-Fi so they talk to each other. It's pretty exciting. I've been in, into a lot of farms and, and the first thing I do is that I look at the bathrooms. And the bathrooms are gonna tell you a lot. If they're well kept, if they're clean and everything else, that means that those people are paying attention. Now those are just like those first glance type things that you do, but what do you look for? You look for, you know, uh, feed. How much feed did they use? You know, you're, you're looking at that. What kind of feed did they use? You know, again, going to the four pillars. You know, what are the densities? Uh, are the animals healthy or not? Uh, are there are the chemicals properly stored? How are the workers being treated? Are they being paid well? Think about this. We started farming 25,000 years ago. We domesticated cattle six or 7,000 years ago. We domesticated chickens and ducks 4,000 years ago. Pigs around the same time. We domesticated fish 50 years ago. And so it is a brand new, it's in certain areas, not so new, but, but it's, it's a very new endeavor. It's a very new enterprise. We're still learning a lot. That's why, you know, and, but it's, it's hard work. It's hard work. Um, it takes a lot of effort. You know, the shrimp that you have on your plate you know, when it first started, it started like eight months ago. Then it goes to the pond, and, and in the pond it's going to take anywhere between three to six months. And then it's going to be harvested. And then it's going to be taken to a plant where it's going to be peeled by hand. There's no automation. Everything is by hand. It's hard. And so I, I, would, I would request that they appreciate the amount of effort that goes into producing that shrimp and processing that shrimp so it's on their plate in, in a healthy, environmentally responsible, socially compliant, humane manner.